seriously on the Rod Peterson Show. Who's, who's at fault? And the last I looked, it's like split equally before all four ways. The last regime, this regime, the players are the owners. John Massey's watching at Edmonton as I look at the comment board. My friend of me, John Massey, he says it's a player issue. The Pedersen, Besser, Horvat era gives me flashbacks of the Hall Eberly era in the orders rebuild number two. Serious PTSD. Uh, by the way, from Todd Pinckney, one of our priority one viewers, we're going to talk about this. He says, although I have known Rod for 26 years, I don't think I've ever seen a hair on his face. Rod, can you confirm or deny? Well, let's just spend a minute on that. Yes, back when I played hockey, all the we decided we were all going to wear beards. It was the senior hockey team. I grew my beard in, it was red. I'm like, I don't want a red beard. Nothing against people with red beards. I don't want it. And I can't grow a mustache. I've tried for November. I can grow a neared very well, a neck beard very well. And no, I've, that's why. I've tried to grow a beard. I could, but it was red. Wasn't in, I wasn't up for that, wasn't okay. here for that. And now if I grew a beard, it would be as white as Santa Claus. It'd be the Matt Dunnigan style. Yep, and I'm not interested in that either, and that is why. And not to mention, if you do, my dad never had a hair on his face either, nor, nor did he ever have hair past. You know, I had a mullet, but I... Who didn't? Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. Sports leagues should start counting tickets scanned at the gates or tickets bought. Why do you care? Now I've stopped going to any score sheet. Well, the NHL's good. The NFL's good. Who cares? You can see. Who cares? I watch the game. Buy a ticket and go. Because it's a lie. It's a fallacy. Why do you care? I used to care. But it's a fallacy. So I don't. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy Hump Day. And welcome to the RP Show. We're back in our second home, Great Eagle Resort and Casino in Calgary, Alberta. The foothills of Alberta and the Rocky Mountains. And we're ready to talk sports here today. we got a really big show coming up. Hall of Famer, wide receiver Jeff Fairholm, formerly of the Arizona Wildcats and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in Toronto, Oregon. It's Jeff Fairholm in hour one. My favorite all time. Pro football player, believe it or not. Uh, that's an hour one. An Olympic gold medal curler and the best friend of Calgary quarterback, Bo Levi Mitchell. Ben Hebert's going to be joining us here at the Gray Eagle. We don't have a lot of time, but we have a good time to welcome in our COO, Lee Genier, joining us here at the stage bar. How you doing, Lee? I am fantastic, Roddy. Yeah, you are. Day. I know you love talking sports, so uh, let's, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. He wanted to know what we we're going to talk about, so let's find out. Can you let's hit the go. quick six show horn? Thank you, <laughs> Director Jordan. We're going to cram all this in real fast. Of all the games last night in the National Hockey League, and I want to say hi to, by the way, to our listeners, WQEE Atlanta. You can always listen live. Listen live is back. Go to our links on Twitter, mine, at Rod Peterson. Click on WQEE. You can listen to the radio live. It's a thing. Of all the games in the NHL last night, and there were a lot of great ones, what stuck out to me is... Vegas Golden Knights forward Phil Kessel has broken the NHL record for consecutive games played. The new Iron Man, Phil Kessel, took to the ice Tuesday night on the opening shift against the San Jose Sharks in his 990th consecutive game. Kessel had matched Keith Yandel's record the other night against Toronto, 989th. Before we move on to the other games, I haven't done all the reading on this. There's some humorous stories about Phil Kessel. You see uh, Blake Wheeler played with him somewhere, and Wheeler said he's, he doesn't drink water. He drinks Coke in between periods, Coca-Cola. Tom Brady, you know, 45 years old, the Tom Brady, drinks 37 glasses of water a day. Not Phil. He lives on hot dogs and Coca-Cola, and he's got the record for the long. What does that tell us? They're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We're all wrong. How why work that? out? Hey, why work out, man? Yeah. Why, why? Why? Why take all the time to work out when you can drink drink Coca Cola and eat hot dogs? <laughs> I know. Play nine hundred and ninety straight games. And by the way, if you watch the highlights, 
of their win last night, because this story doesn't tell you, but I will. Vegas beat the San Jose Sharks last night. Can't remember the score. Doesn't matter. Kessel sniped last night in his 990th consecutive game, and he beat the defenseman around the left wing. He looked like it was his first NHL game, or maybe his 100th. He looked very comfortable. He's not slowing down. No, and that's the beauty. I mean, he's going to finish this season. And, you know, he's going to add another 80 games to it. Well, for sure. And we're getting, yeah, that's right, no, no, no reason to think that he's not going to push this record well into the thousands. And will it ever be touched? There's so much is put into training, and trust me, I get it. I think almost a little too much, because my dad was a scout for the 1985 Memorial Cup champion Prince Albert Raiders. And I know we're going back here, and I don't want to age myself, but I was 11 hanging around that team. They lived on McDonald's, Lee, and they won the Memorial Cup. We're talking Dave Manson, Ken Baumgartner, these guys, Danny Hodgson, Curtis Hunt. They ate at McDonald's every meal, and they won the Memorial Cup. So there's too much focus being put into health food. Yeah, I don't want to to go down too far down the path, but just saying. Hey, man, whatever works for you. I'm a big fan of whatever works in life. Okay, we're going to move on to some other games. Man, are they excited here in Calgary. Nazem Kadri remained red hot. He extended his point streak to six games. He had two goals and an apple to lead the Calgary Flames to a 4-1 NHL victory over the visiting Pittsburgh Penguins. Jonathan Huberdeau with his first as a flame, and Michael Stone also scored for Calgary. It was funny because I didn't get back to Calgary in time to go to the game, so I flipped on the television. I'm watching it here at the Great Eagle. Kelly Rohde with seven minutes left. In the third, says on Sportsnet, I think the Flames had this game in hand. I was like, oh, ho, ho, ho. do you ever? Good for Kelly. And he was right. He was right. He was right. He, he was knows. right. He knows. I will tell you this. Against the Buffalo Sabres last Thursday, and I was there. Ten minutes into the first period, the Calgary Flames thought they had the game in hand. Uh, no. You know what was probably the game of the night last night was at Madison Square Garden. Evan Rodriguez scored in the deciding goal in the shootout, and Alexander Gorgiev made 44 saves. To beat his former team, the Colorado Avalanche went into New York and beat the Rangers 3-2. In Chicago, that title in town. Patrick Kane had a goal and an assist, and Chicago won its fourth in a row, 4-2 over the Florida Panthers. Break up the Blackhawks. Eventually, they will. They're it, flying. Yeah, oh yeah. In Montreal, Joel Erickson had two goals, and Brandon Duhamey scored the tiebreaker in the second period as Minnesota beat the Habs 3-1. I'm not going through all of the games. These are just some of the highlights here. Taylor, Taylor Hall scored the winner late. Boston improved to 6-1. and one. They beat the Dallas Stars 3-1. In Columbus, Shane Gostaspier scored twice. Arizona beat Columbus 6-3. Uh, in Detroit... Jesper Brad had two goals and an assist to lead New Jersey past Detroit at 6-2. Because I know we have fans of the Devils, the Stars, the Sabres, all of them watching. So I just wanted to get their team's games in. Our NHL coverage is brought to you by Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. They're hiring now. Find out everything you need to know at broncoplumbing.com and our Facebook and Instagram pages. Guys, tell Camco we are talking about him, okay, when we were talking NHL. To the CFL because Lee really wanted to talk about this. Um, Head coach Rick Campbell says he expects to start quarterback Nathan Rourke for the BC Lions Friday night. Nathan Rourke, formerly of the Ohio Bobcats University program, was a dominant force early in this CFL season before being sidelined with a foot injury August 19th at Sask. He won player of the week. Pretty much every week. Pretty much every week. For like the first eight weeks, okay? The sophomore out of Ohio, Mississauga product. BC is expected to get some other key pieces back for Friday night at Winnipeg. Last game of the regular season. Lucky Whitehead supposed to be coming back, formerly of the Dallas Cowboys. So, yeah, you wanted to talk about Nathan Rourke coming back. Yeah, absolutely. I want, you know, and I think everybody is going to be watching. That's definitely going to be the game of the week because people want to see. If Nathan Rourke can come back and not skip a beat and put up another 450, 500 yard game and be the difference maker in BC, I think that's what everybody's eyes are going to be on to see, you know, and I think that's overcoming the adversity and seeing what he's made of and coming back off of this injury. Uh, well, not done with that yet. I just want to put out a shout out from our guy, Ryan O'Radio, my spirit brother at WQEE. Metro Atlanta he says, hey, RP and Lee, hot dogs and soda. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. 
Phil should get an endorsement deal with Oscar Mayer and Coca-Cola. Right on. It wouldn't be that hard. Um, Jason in Red Deer says, Phil, the thrill still looks great on the ice despite his average physique and diet. Come on. He looks like every guy you played rec hockey with. Pretty much. He's getting it done. Patrolman Pete in Winnipeg says, Phil Kessel looks like the average hockey dad on my kids under 11 team. He's one of those guys. He's like Chris Chelios. You know, what did he play to 48? Serena and I were talking about that the other day. Those Tom Brady at 45 gives us all which hope. hope. Not that we don't think we're going to play pro, but it's like, you go, man. Same thing as Phil. You go. I um, might go pro next year. You might go pro? Pro what? Maybe I'll come back as a quarterback. <laughs> Ryan O'Radio. What's going on, Big Peach? It's funny. That's something about the guy running the controls right now, WQEE Atlanta. We talk about you all the time, Ryan. And Lee says, I can't get him on the phone. All he wants to do is text. DuPont said the same thing. Oh, I said, I... I get it. I don't want to talk on the phone either. Oh, hey, man, I had a great conversation with him. Did you have him on the phone? I did. I've never had him on the phone. Maybe he was DuPont saying it. I think Ryan or Radio is just like me. If I talk to you on the phone, you should feel very blessed because I don't like talking on the phone. I hate it. I talk for a living. So if you're not paying me. I'm always on the phone. Kidding. I'm a relationship guy. Yes, you are. Um, NHL. Wait a minute. Let me back up. I'm going to jump to point six. It's our poll question today for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center, which is Canada's game of the week in the Canadian Football League. Is it Friday night, BC at Winnipeg? Nathan Rourke returns. I think we all want to see how he does for BC. And then the Saturday triple header, Montreal at Toronto, Hamilton at Ottawa, and Sask at Calgary. Running away with it, the last I saw with 86% of the vote, is the BC Lions at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers Friday night. I'm not even going to go to the Calgary Sask game because it's meaningless. However, you're telling me that it's been announced that Bo Levi Mitchell is starting a quarterback for Calgary? Well, I don't know. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about it and would make a lot of sense. There's rumors. I would think that Dave would want to see um, how Bo looks going into the playoffs so they can have a one two punch there. Um, I don't think Jake Mayer looked incredibly on point last game. Uh, so, I, you know, they, they want to have a, you know, some insurance there for sure. So, uh, they need to get Bo in there, get him playing back in game style. So, because they have, you know, possibly three of the most important games coming up in the in their season. We're, I'm trying and will if we have time. I have not seen our next guest, Jeff Fairholm, show up. And if he's not here, Lou, Lee will stay with us for a while. But because I want to get to NFL World Series. I thought our sports viewers here knew sports. Um, I'm not going to read this guy's name aloud. But he says, if Bo Levi Mitchell is up for trades next year, what team takes him? Or does he retire? He's not going to be traded. He's a free agent. He'll sign wherever he wants. And I'll just say this before you go. Jeff's here, so we're going to pick it up a little bit. Rumor is in Sask, Bo Levi Mitchell was looking at houses in the Queen City uh, on the weekend, Jeff. Jeff just shook his head. You know what Ron Lancaster said, the little general? In Regina, if they haven't heard a rumor by noon, start one. Do you believe? About that? I'll wait till Jeff Spicy. gets in to ask him that. Support for the RP show is brought to you by Manscaped. It's the world leader in men's below the waist grooming. Their products are precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Lee, no, look at him. He's like, he knows. He's smiling because he knows. Right now, their new package is the Performance Package. It's the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer just for you. 20% off with the promo code RPSHOW20 at manscaped.com. Manicure your junk, folks. And it's not like anything else you've ever had before. Manscaped.com. Lee, happy customer. Me too. We're taking each other's word for it. Smooth criminals. Yes, sir. Um, NHL top five, bottom five. Let's get into the NHL top five, bottom five. As compiled by yours truly and brought to you by Bet Regal, our exclusive betting partner. This was the easiest top five I've ever done in my life. Quite frankly, I looked at the overall standings in the NHL. The number one team is the Calgary Flames, who beat up Pittsburgh here last night 4-1. Number two is the Boston Bruins at 6-1. I don't expect that to last. Number three is the Vegas Golden Knights. And although they are number one in the Western Conference, Calgary beat them. So that puts Calgary ahead of them. So it's one Calgary, two Boston, three Vegas, four the Carolina Hurricanes, which is a surprise to nobody. And number five, 
Peter DeBoer's Dallas Stars. Let's see for how long it goes. But they lost to Boston last night. The bottom five, this is going 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So the fifth worst team in the NHL is the Columbus Blue Jackets. Sorry, Johnny Hockey. Fourth worst team is the Anaheim Ducks. Let's pick it up. Quack, quack. New York Islanders is next, and that doesn't bother me because I had them picked to be last in the Metro. They're not going to get out of the bottom five all year, I don't think. Second worst team is the San Jose Sharks. And by the time this is all said and done, they'll probably be the worst. But right now, the worst team is the Vancouver Canucks. Change my mind. I wanted to get Lee's take on this. This is a cute story from the National Football League. The NFL says the two game officials seen interacting with Tampa Bay wide receiver Mike Evans in the tunnel of Bank of America Stadium after the Bucks 21-3 loss to Carolina on Sunday did not ask for an autograph. A reporter captured a video of the two referees approaching Evans as he made his way toward the locker room at the stadium in Charlotte. A second video appears to show Evans writing something as the referee stood next to him while the Tampa players walked past them to the locker room. According to the CBA, the NFL, and the NFL Referees Association, game officials are not allowed to ask players, coaches, or any other team personnel for autographs or memorabilia. I think Mike Evans said he was giving him his phone number. Do you have any funny stories about asking the guys for uh, autographs? Audis? Uh, I mean, I've never asked for autographs. Um, I've had my request for an autograph, but I don't ask for them. I'm sure... I've seen a lot of it, for sure, when guys have an opportunity. Hey, they're human. so And, and rules were meant to be broken. I, I don't believe there was a rule in the Canadian Football League. There probably is in the National Hockey League. Jeff Fairholm, who's here and will be here next, can attest, although we were never on the riders at the same time. I was shoving stuff in front of players all the time. <laughs> all the time. Uh, hey, doubles. I got five jerseys here. As we're about to take off on a charter. And he signed them all. <clears throat> I don't know. It's hey, kind man. of funny, the referee asking for an autograph. I can see why it wouldn't be allowed, but I still think it's funny. Yeah, I mean, it's hilarious. It's a good story. Hey, man, you got your refs looking. It, it, would, it would show some impartial uh, or, or some bias. I think there. these guys are too old, though. They don't really like it. When I meet somebody for the first time. We're not exchanging phone numbers. Most times it's, what's your Twitter handle? I'll DM you. Or Instagram. I doubt but, he was asking for his phone number. Well, he, he, Mike Evans said it was his phone number. That's what I heard. By the way, a word from our sponsors. Edo Japan, delicious Japanese-inspired meals and snacks made to order with high-quality ingredients. Uh, lastly, before you run, who are you cheering for in the World Series? Philadelphia or Houston? Uh, Phillies for sure. Yeah. Good, because yeah. I'm cheering for Houston. That'll make things fun around here. Yeah, let's go. Let's why get you, it on. Why are you cheering for the Phillies? Underdogs? Uh, you know, you know, there's just so much over the last few years bad karma around Houston that, you know, why does go Philly? Okay, gotcha. Thanks for coming on, Lee. Hey, I'll see you later. Fastest 20 minutes in sports is the warm-up right here. Our COO, Lee Genier, good enough to join us at the stage bar. The Hall of Famer. Jeff Fairholm joins us next. Benny Hebert coming up in hour two. We're live from Calgary's entertainment destination, the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino on Game Plus TV, YouTube Live and on the radio on your southern home of sports and talk, WQEE 99.1 FM. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital Ford Lincoln. We have a great selection of brand new F-150s in stock. Drive it off the lot today. Reserve an incoming unit or pre-order the perfect vehicle for you. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital Ford Lincoln, making back to busy easy. People donate blood for moments like this. 
But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Dark Horse Bets today. Beat. I gotta hit the beat. Easy snacking all around. Something everyone can love. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Beautiful day in the foothills. It is the RP Show live from the Great Eagle Resort and uh, Casino. We are moving along. We're moving fast, fast, fast. Just a comment from Ryan in Saratoga, New York. He says, all right, New Jersey crawls out of Rod's bottom five. It's a good day. I put that devil score in there. 6-2 they won at Detroit. That was the Red Wings' first regulation loss all year long. I put in the Sabres loss and did it Ryan in Toronto says, will this be the year for the Calgary Flames? They're looking so good. People really scoffed at me when I said going into the year that the Flames are the number one team in the NHL. Nobody's scoffing anymore. We welcome Jeff Fairholm to the broadcast. Two-time Great Cup champion, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, 1989. Toronto Argonauts in 1997, where he was a teammate of Doug Flutie's. How are you doing, Fairway? I'm doing great, Rod. How are you? Good. Always good to, to see you. Great to be seen, of course. And for our American listeners and viewers, I want to tell them that you played with the Arizona Wildcats, NCAA. Why does college game day never go to Tucson, Arizona? It's kind of like how they never went to Washington State because we were not very good for a long time. Um, we were, uh, I think we went two years without winning a game or maybe winning one game up until this year. Uh, last year, we got a new head coach with Jed Fish. Uh, he, he's been around the NFL, and boy, he's changed things around like crazy down there. And I'm, in fact, I'm I'm going down for to a, to a game in mid November. I can't wait. And they've just changed it around. The offense is fantastic with all of the ways to get players now. Like players are changing schools at will, which I'm not really in favor of. But it really, it really helped the Wildcats. Uh, once we fix our defense, I think we're going to be pretty good in the next couple of years. There you go. Your obligatory NCAA <laughs> talk. But, of course, the Georgia Bulldogs last we saw number one in all of college football. Yeah, shocker. I mean, they, yeah. they're, just, they're just a powerhouse. I mean, you know, even, you know, Arizona being in the Pac-12, whenever we did play a, a an SEC opponent this year in Ole Miss and or Mississippi State, and we get killed. You know, it's just the SEC is like a like a pro league yep. compared to everything else. Best name in football, I believe, Stetson Bennett. <laughs> uh, so, by the way, just from some of our viewers, Stephen in North Dakota writes in. He says the referees don't need to get an autograph with direct deposit. <laughs> Clearly, they haven't heard of uh, DocuSign asking for autographs. You're here to talk a little Canadian football league. They love the chat down there. 
on Game Plus TV and um, WQE. Let me just say this. Our intern, Stephen, writes in and says, Mark Stephen, voice of the Calgary Stampeders, tweeted that Dave Dickinson, coach of Calgary, said post Pactor's Bo, I expect Bo to play. That's Saturday against Saskatchewan here. Before we look forward, let's just look back a minute. Saskatchewan went out with a whimper. Their playoff hopes snuffed out against the Stamps. Did you expect anything different? No, I mean, you know, I'm an evidence-based guy, and, you know, the entire... The entire season, they've been on a downward trend since July 8th when uh, Garrett Marino took out Mazzoli. So, you know, since that time, something happened in the locker room. Who knows what? But the Riders were just on a downward trend, and, you know, there was no chance they were going to beat Calgary uh, last Saturday. I was at the game. They came out and played pretty decently. And But, you know, it's uh, they're just there's just something wrong with that team culturally i think they have some decent players but culturally there's just something wrong in that locker room yeah i want to again sprinkle in some comments here <laughs> jason and red deer says jeff one of my favorite writers of all time from the hockey club podcast watching in tallahassee florida says so cool i was a big jeff fairholm fan he's my favorite all-time writer he's mine hands off Jeff Fairholm. Spread me around. around <laughs> this guy got me tuned into the Canadian Football League. He knows the story, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers do, too. I became a football fan because of Jeff. Can you just tell me what your take is on the Saskatchewan quarterback position with my guy, Cody Fajardo? Does he have the chops to be a star in this league? Was he oversold? Uh, where are you on Cody Fajardo? Well, I can, from what I said, from what I saw this year, and certainly based on, I'm, I'm an evidence-based guy, I said right from the start, I don't trust his arm strength. Um, he doesn't throw a good, a good long ball. His offensive line was absolutely terrible this year, is absolutely terrible this year. So it's hard to get, it's hard to get a good range on him because, you know, when he had happy feet, everyone says that, and you know, with, with defensive linemen bearing down and you like that, how do you not have happy feet? But, you know, when he did have protection, he put it, you know, he looked at one read, he put his head down and he started running if that one read wasn't there. So, <clears throat> you know, he certainly didn't play well this year. It's really hard to gauge with the bad offensive line. He's not going to be back in Saskatchewan. That's pretty clear. <clears throat> but I don't see him as a starter. Something happened after 2019. I don't know. He could throw the long ball. He hurt his shoulder. Um, so maybe that, you know, something long-term um, happened to him. But I just, don't, I just don't see him as a starter in the league. He said uh, yesterday that he's going to test free agency in the offseason. He's already scrapped uh, Saskatchewan. I believe it's a mental confidence thing. My football guys are saying that. And for those of our listeners right now in America, he was with the Nevada Wolf Pack. He's from Brea, California. Cody Fajardo, he was only 30 years of age, spent 2015 with the Oakland Raiders before heading to the CFL. Have you seen a case, and let's just stick with football, of a guy losing his confidence but getting it back? Yeah, sure. I mean, I lost my confidence, you know, a couple of times. I mean, it happens, right? Not <laughs> throughout an entire year, but, you know, it's one of those things when, when I lost my confidence and I was, you know, worried about catching the ball, so to speak. I mean, I'd go right back to basics and just work on that, work on the basic techniques. And I still do that in my sales career. You just go back to basics and, you know, build up again. It's, it's a constant struggle because once you start getting comfortable in where you are, I mean, you know, you, you it goes downhill. There's ups and uh, there's ups and downs. But to see a quarterback that's that's gone down this this bad in in an entire year, I don't think I've ever seen it before. Have you? No, and it's tough to watch. Yeah, it really is. He's such a good guy. Yes. Like he came out on the field after the game. I was, I stood there and watched on purpose because I wanted to see. It was it was fan appreciation day, and some players were going to come out after after the game on Saturday. And you know, one of the first guys out is Cody Fajardo. I mean. Mm. You know, it's got to be terrible on him being, you know, thrown to the thrown to the ashes, and then all of a sudden he comes out and he's taking selfies with kids and signing autographs. I mean, great guy, but that doesn't cut it in pro sports anymore. And you know, you've got to perform on the field, and to me, he just hasn't performed. Again, with a little caveat, no offensive line. I get it, but you know, I just from what I saw with his mechanics, there's something wrong. Yeah, well, why I find it tough to watch. You say it's, and you're right when you say it doesn't cut it to be just a nice guy anymore. And you're pro I shouldn't speak for you, but do you not like Chris Jones? You're like everybody else that doesn't like Chris Jones because he's <laughs> not a fan of him. No, there you go. No, not uh, not a nice guy. Well, what do you want? Yeah, not you, but that? everybody. Yeah.
Ted in Red Deer says, if you think Bo Levi will watch the Riders' offensive line play for two games and then think, man, I'd love to play there, I think you're sadly mistaken. Jack in Vulcan, Alberta says, put Cody Fajardo on a team with a solid old line and great coaching, and he will be a star. Before we talk about the future of Bo, you played with Doug Flutie and won a great cup in 1997. Can you give us a Doug Flutie story? Doug lived with me for Come on. Uh, for training camp, actually, in, in 90, 96, actually. I hate to correct you, but it was 96 Sorry. I won the Grey Cup with him. He also won one in 97. But, yeah, Doug lived with me, and um, he uh, lived me, with me and my wife, and, and he was great. He had his family up, and we got a chance to meet him. And we've got a picture somewhere where his daughter's doing his hair, and he has ponytails. So I got a picture. <laughs> I, so, I, I know. I got to find it. We've moved a couple times since then. But, it, yeah, I got to dig that picture up. Great guy, though. We love playing with him. He had... You know, he, he had a little bit of a bad rap, too, like from other people who didn't know him. But he was one of the most personable guys. He would do anything for you. Um, just a terrific guy and a great teammate. Would you say he's bigger than people gave him credit for or or not? Like how tall? Is he, he had to be 5'9". Oh yeah, no, he's yeah. not tall. He, yeah, no, I, no, I don't. I wouldn't say he's bigger. Yeah, but he wasn't five seven either. Uh, no, he wasn't five seven, but he wasn't big. But you know, he's what an athlete. I don't think he ever worked out in the off season. He just sort of played. He played basketball. He was a goalie in hockey. He plays the drums, which is tiring. And... The Phil Kessel of football. <laughs> well, maybe he... no. Let's not go that far. But he, you know, at least he did something in the off season. But no, Doug was just a, a true athlete, and man, he would do. He would draw stuff up in the dirt. It was just totally, literally, again, literally on the field, yeah. and. It was just so against my style, but, you know, you tell me where to go and I'll go. But, uh, yeah, it was sort of against my style, but, man, he was just incredible. Jeff Kabilis in Winnipeg says, I almost forgot Jeff played for the Argos Super Team of 1996. That's why we bring these guys on here. These wonderful stories come up. We're sitting here in Calgary, wonderful Canadian Football League town, and I can't believe how they don't talk about Bo Levi Mitchell's career winding down here. He's their all-time passing leader. We're hearing he'll start Saturday in his last start at McMahon. What do you think he'll do? I, I don't even know he knows where he's going to go, but what do you think next year holds for him? First of all, I'd like to say publicly what a professional he is because, you know, he's been demoted. He's, he is the all-time greatest stamps quarterback, I think, and he hasn't said a word. You know, no. he's, been, he's been the ultimate teammate. He's been demoted. He's taken it like a man. He's taken it like a professional. He's not sitting there whining. And he's just, you know, he's just biding his time. He's, he'll play when he, when he goes out to play. And uh, I'm, I'm glad he gets to play against the Riders uh, this Saturday. I expect him to do well. I mean, you know, who wouldn't? And But what a professional. I'm, I'm really, you know, I, I know him a little bit, but what a professional. And he's been a, just a staunch, standout guy through, through all of this, which has got to be really, really hard. I don't think I could handle it. I know I couldn't handle it the way that he has. I, I didn't play one game when healthy, and I'll tell you, I was not a happy camper. Now, I didn't say anything, but, I, you know, and he probably, he's not saying anything. What was anything. that story? Well, I think it was, I think it was in um, 90, I can't remember what year it was. I was with Toronto and, and Obi. Uh, we were going to San Antonio, and for some reason he wanted to switch things up, and he sat me and didn't bring me and played some other, played some other people. So I wasn't happy. Who would be? Uh, you know, I was, but I was professional about it, and uh, I got back in the next game. But, you know, you, you've got a coach is coach. They, they make decisions, and you've got a, you're not, you don't have to be happy about it, but you do have to be a professional about it. Fans are enjoying the football talk here. Uh, Jennifer from the Four Seasons writes in. She says, I never had faith in Cody. Even if we sat in the first row, I would still feel the same. Or same row, I would still feel the same. Sorry. You're all entitled to your opinion, for sure. Jason in Red Deer says, the real question is, why was he demoted? He wasn't doing terrible. No, no, no. They felt that his time was done. Well, you know, I, no? I, he wasn't doing terrible, but, you know, I and everyone's blaming Jason Moss for the short passes No, he's here. talking about Bo. Oh, Bo, excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think. No, Bo I wasn't think. doing terrible. No, but, you know, they needed to make a change. I think the, the organization decided that they weren't going to sign Bo. Maybe it's a money thing, um, but they they needed somebody to, to grow up into that spot, and Bo was not in their long-term plan, so they made a change when they did to, to give Meyer the, uh, the the chance that he did. So, And he's done okay. No, Bo was doing just fine. Uh, in fact, his arm strength, I think, looked a lot better after coming off the injury from last year. Um, but I think it's an organiza organizational thing, and they were going in a direct, different direction next year, and they, they decided to, to do it halfway through this. Two minutes left in this uh, segment, and then we'll come back and maybe switch gears, get to a sports update. But for, for our BC viewers, Channel 924 and Telesoptic Cable, you don't want to talk about the Canucks. 
and I don't blame you. So the Lions, their tickets went on sale for the playoff game, and the Seahawks are helping them with a promo code and a pre-sale. I love it. I love what's going on in Vancouver. And Nathan Orr comes back to play Friday night, at least a quarter, they say. Great, great story, isn't it? I mean, he, he recuperated really well. I mean, he's he's not 100%, so I hope they don't put him in too much danger. But he needs to he needs to get one game under his belt before the before the uh, postseason. I tried that when I blew out my knee. I tried to come back. It didn't work out. I got ended up getting hurt again and couldn't make it back. But I'll tell you what, you know, having Nathan work back is great for the CFL. It's great for the BC Lions. And, you know, I think it's just great for the league and I hope that I hope that he comes in and does well and if he does watch out for the BC Lions <sighs> that would be a great story wouldn't it and what a rebuild job they've done yeah, on the field I mean, and off. Nobody, nobody was picking them to make the playoffs at the beginning of the year, and then all of a sudden Nathan Rook comes out. and You know, it, it really goes to show you how important a quarterback is in our league. Um, you know, when he went down, <laughs> so did the BC Lions. Right. So, you know, it's oh. really important to have a, have a starting quarterback that, that is, you know, good, but you also have to have your Canadians as well, which they have. I got to write some notes down because you're making me think of a lot of things I want to pick your brain on. But the 902 text line is open. You can write us right here at the studio, 902-518-3033. Sean's watching on Game Plus TV in Vancouver, and he says, Morning, Roddy. The show should try to get that lady on the show who sits behind the Flames bench every game. An RP show, human interest piece. New segment. I have no idea who, to whom you're referring. I swear, and this is what a hockey puck mm -hmm. I am, when they show Daryl Sutter, I'm looking at Daryl Sutter. Not, not who's behind him. I'm not. The one in Dallas. <laughs> I get it. Oh, but Calgary, I don't know who's sitting behind Daryl Sutter. Anyways, we'll find that out. Lee's on it. Lee is committed to finding that person. We'll be back to Gray Eagle right after this. Calgary's entertainment destination. You're watching on Game Plus TV, listening on WQEE 99.1 FM. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to YouTube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. Text 902-518-3033. Golf, Hawaii, and the Four Seasons. Imagine picking up your clubs and feeling like a pro for one whole week in paradise. Well, you can get that chance this December with five-star accommodations, a three-day tournament at a championship course, and loads of VIP experiences. The Pro Leisure Golf Tour is going to make you feel like a pro, even if your golf game doesn't. So whether you're looking to grab your golfing buddies for a tropical getaway or just wanting to find an exclusive VIP experience to take part in, the PLGT is perfect for you. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital Ford Lincoln. We have a great selection of brand new F-150s in stock. Drive it off the lot today. Reserve an incoming unit or pre-order the perfect vehicle for you. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital Ford Lincoln, making back to busy easy. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and you Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. 
Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital GMC. Reserve your brand new truck or SUV today. Check out our great selection of in-stock GM certified pre-owned trucks. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital GMC. Making back to busy easy. Check out our website, and when I say we, I mean Great Eagle Resort and Casino. Great Eagle Resort and Casino.ca has our entire fall and winter entertainment lineup. Darcy Oak, Saturday night, illusionist. I don't even know if there's tickets left or not, but he's unbelievable. His dad, Scott Oak, from Hockey Night in Canada. you got to go see this. Before we continue with Jeff Fairholm, two-time Great Cup champion, Hall of Famer, a sports update, the Everest... Canadian Curling Club Championship will debut in Manitoba next year. It was announced by Curling Canada. Winnipeg's Assiniboine Memorial Curling Club will welcome some of Canada's most talented grassroots and club-level curlers for the competition a year from now, November 19th to the 25th. The Everest Canadian Curling Club Championships are for rec club-level curlers who don't have the time or resources to compete at the high-performance level. The event gives those curlers the existing opportunity to represent their home province or territory at a Canadian championship. I think that's great. The Toronto Raptors will be looking to win their second game in a row and second straight at home when they host the 1-3 and three Philadelphia 76ers tonight. But again, who cares about the Raps? Our Atlanta Falcons are at the Detroit Pistons tonight. Hashtag true to Atlanta. And what else? The Edmonton Oilers will be aiming to go above 500 for the first time this season when they host the St. Louis Blues. Sorry, when they visit the St. Louis Blues. It's one of three games in the NHL. The Oilers are 3-3, three and three, Blues 3-1. Three and one. Also tonight, Subway Series in New York. Rangers at the Islanders. And the Tampa Bay Lightning will face the Ducks at Anaheim. This sports update for Edo Japan. Edo Japan's fast and friendly service plus online ordering options is easy and convenient when you're on the go. As I mentioned, Jeff Fairholmes here. Pop it or guest, as always, 902-518-3033 is the number to text us or on the uh, YouTube feed. If you have questions for Jeff, fire them our way. You can bring him in, guys, if you don't mind. BC Lions quarterback Nathan Rourke. This is also in the sports update. Is expected to play at least one quarter Friday against the Blue Bombers in Winnipeg. He's missed the second half of the season with a broken foot. How about this? A GM of the BC Lions. And I've long said that there should be a GM of the Year award in the CFL, Jeff. There is in every other league. Yeah, there should be, you're right. They went out and got Vernon Adams via trade, and it secured them second place in the West in a home home field. It did. You know, they, they had a guy go down, and they weren't happy with what they were with, the, with what they were putting on the field, and they made a great trade. They, that guy should be – who is it, by the way? Who is the general manager in BC? I don't Neil know McAvoy. McAvoy, right. And Rick Campbell. Yeah, well, Rick, oh, Rick Fanville. Co-GM. Yeah, co-GMs. Like, great job getting getting some people in, and they've made some other moves, which I, I think are fantastic. I kind of wish we'd seen that with our Rough Riders. Well, and that's the point. Um, they did not make those moves. You know yourself, man. You played, how long was your pro career? Nine years. Long enough. When your general manager is making moves to fortify your team, especially midseason, that galvanizes a room. That fires you up. It, well, it fires you up, but it also makes you look behind your back if they're bringing some competition in for you, right? So, you know, it, it does a lot of things. And it makes you think that the organization is doing whatever they can to make the team better, which helps you. You know, it makes you work a little bit higher, harder in practice. And, you know, hey, if they're behind us and, you know, the fans are behind us, then we'll work hard too. From our viewers, John in Edmonton. I get the sense a lot of them want to talk hockey today, and I get it. John says, the Arizona Coyotes are set to begin their home schedule inside the cozy confines of the 5,000-seat Mullet Arena. It just, the jokes write themselves about Mullet Arena. 
<laughs> well, it kind of is. It's just weird how it's it's weird how a pro sports franchise in this day and age can can be doing that. It was almost you know it's almost like some of the stadiums we played in you know back in the nineties when we went to Memphis and we were playing on a half grass half astroturf field. You know, it's just it's just weird. It's like they're jamming a square peg in a round hole. But you know, whatever. Hopefully, they'll get a stadium soon. Speaking of, we had the executive director of the Liberty Bowl on our show uh, about a month ago, Steve Earhart out of Memphis, and they're still playing in that place, the Liberty Bowl. Like, did you get a sense of history when you went in there? Yeah, to play? I, lo- I love the Liberty Bowl. I mean, I had no problem with the Liberty Bowl, but when they tried to make the field Canadian size, they had to add, I think it was five yards of AstroTurf on the outside of the grass. Because it was just, and so I felt like when I ran an out pattern, I had to change my cleats as I was running out there. And then the end zones were weird, and it was just again putting a square peg in a round hole. But th- that was fun. But I also got to play in the in the Baltimore Stadium as well, which I thought for me had a lot more nostalgia. The I think Memorial Stadium, I Baltimore think. Memorial, Baltimore Memorial, I think. There's so. a wonderful book written about the Stallions, that that era. Uh, I should get it for you. You'd enjoy it. Are you yeah. a reader? You fly oh, yeah. all the time. So. I read all the time. Yeah. Regarding the lady that sits behind the Calgary Flames bench, <laughs> Kirk Sorota watching writes in. He says, the lady behind the Flames bench has been a longtime season ticket holder. The name escapes me. How would you know her name? Is she that famous? I'm that big of a hockey dork that when they show the Flames bench, I'm looking at Daryl Sutter as God is my witness. That's a fact. Not anymore. No, 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 I can't. (laughs) Saturday night, Battle of Alberta. I'll be there. I can't wait. Orders flames. From my cousin Christine in Medicine Hat, regarding the Raptors, she says, I care. You should care, Chris, and that's fine, but we're on the air in Atlanta, not Toronto. To hell with Toronto, as far as I'm concerned, except for Game Plus television. Um, The viewers want to know who you think will be in the Grey Cup. Well, it's hard to bet. Hard to bet against Winnipeg. Uh, they're playing so well, and they're they're so well coached. Great organization. I think BC is a dark horse. I don't see Calgary getting there. So I'm going to pick. I'm going to go with Winnipeg, and you know, I'm gonna, I'm going to go with Winnipeg and Toronto. Toronto's playing really well. I I was not a Bethel Thompson fan, but you know what? He's he's really come to play of late, and his and that defense, the Toronto defense, is fantastic. So I see Winnipeg and Toronto in the Great Cup. Macbeth, we call him. Macbeth, sorry. <laughs> so, I said Winnipeg, Toronto at the outset of the year, if I may. That's a fact. Great defense. That they they're really underrated. They that defensive line is going to put a lot of pressure on, on on whoever they play. Somebody tell me, please, who is the Argonauts defensive coordinator? I don't know. Corey Mace. Corey Mace. Thank Corey you. Mace. That didn't take long. Corey tell Mace. them what he's won, Bob. A free buffet at the Gray Eagle <laughs> on me. Actually, on the Gray Eagle. Aaron in Edmonton says, good morning, everyone. Long time no watch. Hello, Aaron. We already talked about your Oilers, and we've got about a minute to talk about the Elks and the Riders. We're talking about two non-playoff bound teams, man. Who could believe that? And maybe, you know what, I'll just set it up, and we'll come back and talk about it next. We're sitting here again in a Calgary CFL playoff bound market. It's exciting what's going on with the Lions and the Stampeders, and Winnipeg sitting there waiting for the winner. I also get what's going on in Edmonton and Saskatchewan where your seasons are over, so you're already talking about next year. And there was this rumor that Bo Levi Mitchell was looking at houses in Sask on the weekend (laughs) and the next coaching staff's ready in Sask. And it's Lancaster said it. If you haven't heard a rumor by noon in Regina, start one. So we'll pause and come back and talk. Put a wrap. We got lots of time for it. Sorry, Jeff. (laughs) Write it down. I did remember what I was going to ask you, and that was during the season trades. Benny Hebert coming up in hour two, Olympic gold medal curler and Bo Levi's best friend. We'll be right back on Game Plus TV, YouTube Live, and WQEE 99.1 FM. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to YouTube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. 
the addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tea time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us, and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have, utilizing a fully integrated 360-degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. It's what we call viewer takeover. And all that's going to be is questions from our viewers for Jeff Fairholm, our good friend, my favorite all-time Rough Rider joining us here at Gray Eagle. And a blossoming color analyst. How far <laughs> do you see this going? You've already got your first game under your belt. I don't know. I don't even know how I did. I mean, I'm still waiting for the recording. But it was fun. I did the U of S, um, U of R game um, a couple Saturdays ago. And I had a ball. It was fun. It got me really involved. I don't know how I did. How far do I want to take it? As far as it'll go, I think it's it's uh, it's a good hack for me. I'd I'd love to do it. It's just uh, a lot of fun for me. I love football, and it'd, it'd be good. A little note from a broadcasting standpoint. I said to Fairway over here, if you didn't hear anything, that's a good thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a great thing. I suppose actually. that's true. Um, Arlen Bruce the third is watching AB3. He says, take the deal. BC Lions versus Toronto Argonauts in the Grey Cup. Mandy in Edmonton says, what are the chances Chris Jones, Chris Jones, stays with the Elks going into next season? I'd say 50-50. <laughs> I'd say 100%. Why? He's got a four-year contract. Three years are left at six to $700,000 a year. They're not firing him. There's no way. Oh, they're not going to fire him, but he no. might leave. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might quit. I, mean, I think that's what people that might, be, might be mentioning. Is that what you're getting at, Mandy? <laughs> um, my cousin Chris wants to know if you are still a Ryder fan. Me? Yeah. Oh, I'm through and through. Yeah, absolutely. I've, 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 I even, you know, after I went to Toronto, and people ask me, why aren't you a Tor Toronto Argonauts fan? As well, you know, the, uh, the Riders gave me my chance. I played six years there. I love the people. I love the city. I love the province. Um, I'm, I'm a Rough Rider fan through and through. I wear the gear all the time. Follow the man 
on social media, specifically Twitter. Slotback18, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you just tweeted a photo of yourself. and I was riders. on a plane coming back from Winnipeg, of all places, and I had my Saskatchewan sweatshirt on and my Arizona hat. Did you get jeered? I didn't, actually. Well, maybe one person did. but The <laughs> I, pilot? No, but it, actually the, the uh, flight attendant when I walked on the plane, as a matter of, of fact. But uh, no, uh, it was, you know, I don't get jeered. They're pretty cool about it. Um, well, hey, I, we all want to know. And Benny's going to talk some curling with us. You're looking great on TV, uh, by the way, Ben, on the weekend. You always do. Got killed, but I look well, you look good. Your team didn't look so good. <laughs> Bo, that's Ben's best friend. Did I get out of you what you... You said you saw him this weekend? You, Jeff, uh, I saw, off well, the field? Yeah, I was staying at the Hotel Saskatchewan where the team was playing. And I can, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, he was walking around the hotel. I mean, how about that? <laughs> I mean, Breaking news. You know, is he looking? Oh, they are that? human beings away from the stadium. News at 11. I didn't see him looking for condos. So, <laughs> well, and that's what I wanted to wind this up with, with you is again, you know, that with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders out of it, the rumor mill is going to start and it's going, man. Oh, yeah. Full time. Yeah, I mean, everybody everybody has an opinion in Saskatchewan. And like you said, Lancaster said, if you haven't heard one, start one. A rumor. Uh, a rumor. Uh, you've got to get, you know, I, you want my opinion on what's going to happen? Well, that's why you're here. Uh, my crystal ball is no clearer than yours. Um, I don't see, with all due respect to your next guest and a friend of Bo's, I, I don't see Bo going to Saskatchewan. Uh, in my opinion, why would you want a quarterback in Saskatchewan that's not good enough to start with the, with the Calgary Stampeders? Enough said there. Uh, as far as the management's concerned, I see Craig Reynolds keeping his job. I think financially they're stable. I think. I don't really look at the numbers, especially with the Grey Cup this year in Regina. Um, I, I would have hoped that O'Day would be on the hot seat and keep Dixon, Dickinson. Um, but having thought about that, if you get a new GM, he's going to want his own head coach. He or she would want her, was his own head coach. So I don't know what's going to happen. Something has to happen. You know, you can't. You, you can't have another season if you stay with status quo. As much as I like status quo, um, something's got to happen. And unfortunately, I think it's going to be Dickinson who's going to lose his job. We have a minute and a half. We're big NFL fans around here. We're airing in Atlanta. Big Falcons fans. What are the Falcons now? Three and four, I believe. Uh, Better than expected. Yeah. How much are you following the NFL? I know enough to be dangerous. I mean, I sit, I sit around. I haven't watched it the last couple of weeks because I've been traveling. But hey, I you know I listen to the pregame shows and I I, I watch the games that I like and uh, you know I know enough to be dangerous. So who do you think will be in the Super Bowl? I, too early I, to say. Too early to say. It always is. You know the the Packers are going to write themselves. I think they're going to be okay. Uh, Dallas. I don't see Dallas. Although Dallas has a good defense. So you know I don't know who's going to be there. Um, I love Philadelphia. I love what they're doing. Wouldn't it be a great story? If the uh, if the Phillies win the World Series and the and the Eagles win the Super Bowl, that'd be fantastic for the for the city. Um, but it's too early to tell. I just right now, I'm just enjoying it. Tom Brady done? Yeah, I think he's done. I, I just don't think he has the tools around him anymore, and you know he just can't move. And you know when stuff happens off the field like that, it is hard. As much of a professional and <laughs> as, as experienced as he is, it's tough to get over that. And you know, I, yeah, I think he's done. I think he'll finish the year, obviously, but I don't think the Bucks are going to go anywhere. Always a treat with this guy, Jeff Fairholm. Thanks, Fairway. My pleasure, Roddy. Anytime. The best, the best. My favorite rough rider all time. Benny Hebert coming up next, and maybe Lee Genier, too. Stick around, everybody, here on Game Plus TV and WQEE 99.1 FM. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. Up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson.
Hawaii and the Four Seasons. Imagine picking up your clubs and feeling like a pro for one whole week in paradise. Well, you can get that chance this December with five-star accommodations, a three-day tournament at a championship course, and loads of VIP experiences. The Pro Leisure Golf Tour is going to make you feel like a pro, even if your golf game doesn't. So whether you're looking to grab your golfing buddies for a tropical getaway, or just wanting to find an exclusive VIP experience to take part in, the PLGT is perfect for you. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital GMC. Reserve your brand new truck or SUV today. Check out our great selection of in-stock GM certified pre-owned trucks. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital GMC, making back to busy easy. Easy snacking all around. Something everyone can love. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes to our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. think sports leagues should start counting tickets scanned at the gates or tickets bought why do you care now i've stopped going to any score sheet well the nhl's good the nfl's good who cares you can see who cares i watch the game buy a ticket and go because it's a lie it's a fallacy why do you care i used to care but it's a fallacy so i don't this is the rod peterson show Hello, everybody. We are on the air. It's hour two of the RP Show coming at you live from the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. And uh, we have, it's before a live studio audience here at the stage bar. And the nice gentleman down here said probably the nicest of anybody in Alberta since we've been coming here 19 weeks ago. He said we got to move the, the couch closer to the front of the stage so we can see all the guests. So that's what we will do beginning tomorrow. A big thank you to uh, CFL, great two-time champion, Jeff Fairholm last hour. How about this one? We welcome our good friend Benny Hebert to the stage. <laughs> the Tiger Woods of curling. You don't like that, but I do. It's false. It's false. <laughs> Fake well, news. At, listen to this. Four Briar championships. Two world curling championships. You stop me if I'm wrong. Olympic gold medal. World junior curling championship. Those are all correct. Yeah. Those are all correct, yeah. No, yeah. it's good. I've had a good, good little career. Good little yeah, resume. And he's not... Nowhere near done yet, right? No, hope not. Hope not. Yes. Uh, so Benny is here in Calgary and has been for a long time. For all of our viewers and uh, radio listeners, if you want to look him up, Ben Hebert. I was out in Chestermere this summer, and they said, no, 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 it's a bear. I'm like, <laughs> pretty sure it's Hebert. I've known him 25 years. It's, it's Hebert. You still but get I it? I don't mind the a bear reference. You know, the one I hate is Herbert, eh? That's not a good one. The, the Phantom R. I'm yes. good with Hebert. I'm good with Hebert. So either or. But it it's is, definitely Hebert. It is Canada after all. So as we reset here into hour two and welcome all of our viewers that maybe weren't watching an hour ago or listening, we're on Game Plus television across all 10 <clears throat> provinces and 31 states. We're on WQEE Atlanta, 99.1 FM. And uh, we welcome all of the podcast listeners here right now. We went through today the NHL morning skate. From last night's games, there were 10. And to me, the highlight, maybe it's a good place to start with, Benny. We all know what we're going to get into. Even Ben knows what we're going to get into. 
But Phil Kessel sets an all-time NHL record, 990 consecutive games. It's a record in the National Hockey League on a diet of Coca-Cola and hot dogs. Hey, I love him. I've always liked Phil Kessel. How can we not? I I think he took a little bit of a bad rap in a few of the cities he was in. Absolute superstar. Wicked shot. I used to watch him a lot on the Leafs when he played with Bozak. You know, good Regina boys. Used to follow Bozy a bit. And uh, when he was going in Toronto, and then obviously Pittsburgh, he won a couple cups, and now he's in Vegas, and that's yeah, great for Phil. I think Phil got left off an Olympic team. Was it 14 or 18 maybe because of the maybe the aura about him or his but work he ethic? work hard, yeah. Guy's a superstar. He can play that many games. He's obviously, hey, not every athlete has a six-pack, as I can, you can, I can see on me too, right? I mean, yeah. I, you got I, the I, pipes, lift, though. I lift weights, and I work out, and uh, maybe, maybe Phil likes to have a piece of pizza with his, with his uh, pop and then go score a hat trick. I like, it, sounds like a, it sounds like a fun guy to me. Uh, he sniped in the record-setting game last night, too. I saw it. I Vegas saw it. won 4 2. A really nice goal. And I, all I'm saying, whether you train or how you train, you, you have to train. But the point is, does this not tell you you either have it or you don't? Did you see an article yesterday of all his ex teammates talking about yes. kind of. And they were all, drink water. Yeah, and they were all just saying, though, he's strong as an ox. He works out. He's huge in the gym, squats like a, you know. So he obviously works hard enough to get as many points. He's, he's 35, and he's still one of the best players in the league. Well, and He's played 990 games in a row and probably the hardest league to stay healthy. I play in my beer league Sunday nights, and I leave, and I got aches and pains with no hitting. And as our COO, who was with us last hour, said, uh, Lee Genie, he said, there's no reason to think Phil's slowing down. Like he's going to shatter 1,000 and keep going, at least this year. Yeah, I love watching Phil. Good, good for Phil. That's a, that's a big uh, feather in his mm. cap. Going to be a tough one to break, I think. I don't know if anyone's breaking that record. And, and not this way. They don't make him that way anymore, I don't believe. And, and, and by the way, Jeff Fairholm last hour said he roomed with Doug Flutie in the 90s with Toronto Argonauts, and he said Flutie never worked out. I would have no problem believing that. He's just very naturally talented. He's just a wicked athlete. Yeah. I had a good chat with Doug last year when he was on our show, and he still plays hockey, he plays baseball, he surfs. He's just, he's an active guy. Plays the drums. Yoga. He's in a band with his brothers. Yeah, no, he's a, he's a total beauty. Doug Flutie. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Ben Hebert here, the Tiger Woods of curling. And I only, the reason I gave you that was just because of your temp- temperament on the sheet of ice. I get a little hot every now and again. Nothing I'm, off. Uh, I'm you know, working on it. You took it as an insult, and <laughs> no, I did no. not mean it that way. If anyone calls you Tiger Woods, it's a compliment. I love Tiger exactly. Woods. Exactly. He's, he's my favorite. All the ballers do love Tiger Woods because they get it. Of course. Oh, yeah. Right? But as you know, I've made a career of being misunderstood, and at this stage of the game, it ain't changing. But you guys, you told me you had a rough outing, uh, Grand Slam. Yeah, in, in Grand Prix. Yeah, we got off to a great start. New team this year, so we're kind of feeling, feeling things out. Won our first event, 7-0. and Went 3-1 and our next event. You know, had a little bit of a good start to the season. And then we got whooped last weekend in Grand Prairie. But, hey, sometimes you need a little little humble pie and look yourself in the mirror and keep working. But, you know, the f- three teammates I have, Brendan Botcher, Brett Gallant, Mark Kennedy, you know, it's been, uh, it's been four weeks of fun. Obviously, last week getting our butts kicked wasn't fun. But learn lots when you lose. We got a lot of hard work to do. We know that. But, you know, it's a team that I know that if we put the work in, we got the talent. And, you know, that makes me excited. So, and I've seen the work ethic these young guys have, and they're pushing me to work harder too. I need a couple more days off than them after an event. They're pretty gung ho to go. I need a couple of rest days, but it's awesome. We're going to get there. We're going to be one of the top oh. teams. We just got to figure some things out. But, you know, a lot of good teams out there. We lost everyone from Europe last week. We didn't even play a Canadian team. So, we got, uh, we got a little bit of work to do, but uh, it's been great so far, and boys have been working hard, and we'll keep climbing the mountain. How about that? You've got the right attitude. You always have. Stop the presses. I just looked up your Wikipedia here. You would know this. I was not aware that in 2019, Ben Hebert was named the greatest Canadian male lead in history in a TSN poll. Well, yeah. congratulations. How's wow, that feel? I got I to gotta keep adding to the resume or someone's maybe going to pass me. I got to keep her going. The Phil Kessel now of curling. Right? Yeah. No, I, was, I mean, it was just a poll through some, I think, writers Dude. and maybe... Maybe it's amazing. Yeah, it was good. Hey, what? it's more of a resume thing. There's a lot of good leads. I'm, I'm not naive to, to what position I play. You're a role player on the curling team. There's a ton of good leads out there. I've been fortunate to play with some wicked, like, unbelievable Hall of Fame curlers. Yeah. Been on those teams, won a lot. You know, I still take pride in my game. I still think I'm as, as good of a lead as there is out there, and I'm going to keep working hard, and I'm not, uh, not going to be done until I'm not. As soon as I clear, is there, there's a clear-cut guy who just passes me by, and I can't keep up with him, and I can't sweep with him, or I can't make shots, 
I'll be uh, I'll be in a different chair, but uh, I don't think that's the, that's the case yet. For those that just tuned in, we're just going to back up the truck up for a second. Ben Hebert here. How old are you now, Benny? I'm 39. 39. 39. You'll be 40 in March. We'll plan a big party for that. Should be a good one. Um, Four-time Canadian champion, two-time world championship champion, Olympic gold medalist, world junior champion. He's a living Hall of Famer sitting here right now. But I'm always cognizant of our American viewers and listeners that make up, I think it's 20 to 30 percent of our audience. What do you know about American curling? I know that we gave them a gold medal in 2018 when they beat Didn't, us in the semi. That yeah. one hurt. No, I mean, uh, I know it's growing down there. Uh, there's, there's small pockets maybe that it's growing, and obviously climate, I think, plays a big factor in that. But it's big in Wisconsin, you know, Bemidji. Uh, where else do they have, you know, I there's think a curling uh, club in Florida. There's not one far in, from me. There's one in Phoenix. They do it. They do a tournament there every year now. And it's growing. I think that uh, the Olympics every four years, you know, I hear some Americans talk about how they love the curling and they watch it, you know, year to year. Obviously, it's tough down there. You got Major League Baseball. You got NFL. You got all the big sports. Right. So I don't think curling is ever going to be that even in Canada, whether, you know, compared to the United States, you're still going to have the big major sports. But I think it's growing a bit down there. And obviously curling in the future. If there's ever a way to make it professional, professional, and get the big money into it, it has well, to excel. Out. It has to excel in the United States because Canada's not the we're not the corporate backing of you know driving a whole sport like the America. They win a gold medal down there. If you're Sean White, you're, you're Lindsey Vaughn, Michael Phelps. You know we don't really have that in Canada, right? So it would be great if curling ever got there. But I think curling is in a great spot. It is growing in the states. They have a really good, they got two really good men's teams. They got a couple really good women's teams. So I don't really know much about their junior program, but they're, they're doing well down there. Was there not a huge to-do over the event in Las Vegas? And was that the Worlds this year? Over so, the ice? Was yeah, Brad Gushu that had a yeah, big Yeah, that was last year maybe. Yeah, yeah, it was. Hey, we can't talk hey, about I, that? I don't, I don't agree a whole lot with Brad Gushu all the time. You know, we're competitors and we knock heads, but he, if he was upset about the ice, he had to play on in the World Championships. He was correct. It was tough sled, and I felt bad for the Canadians having to play on that. But, I mean, hey, we've all played on some gross ice over the years. If you play long enough, as we do, and you play in world championships and briars, you're going to find some bad patchy uh, sheets of ice out there, and we've all played on them. But, unfortunately, it happens at a world championship. Well, does it mean anything that both teams play on it? You know, in a football game, you'd say that. Both teams got to play on this track. That's what the fans say. They do. It just it takes a lot of skill out of it. If you yeah, if, if, I'm, if you're true. if you're a way better putter than me, right? And we're playing a nice juicy green greens and you're putting it, you're probably gonna out putt me. Best putter normally wins, right? Use your skill set. We take it down, down off the putting green, we go down to the parking lot, and you got a little plinko going on. I could out putt you there. Yeah. You know, it's kind of my I get it. that's my analogy. I absolutely get it. But yeah, and as and as top players, you wanna perform and show all the work that you've put in prior to be great at your sport. You're on TSN. You're playing in front of the world. You want to you put on a show? Tough to put on a show when you're, you're feeling naked out there because you can't make a shot. Very good. Well, well, yeah, that's a very good point. There you go. The best team won't win on bad ice. They can win. A little, the great equalizer, we call it. <laughs> right. Right? Um, from our viewers, by the way, we're going to hit Ben. It's 11-11 Mountain, by the way, 111 Eastern. Just pointing that out. But we'll hit him with all the football oh. questions. Next segment... Because there's curling questions here, and Arlen Bruce, I'm going to get to yours. It's a great one. Um, Colin in Ottawa, though, with a curling question, says, what are some differences, Ben, between your old skip, Kevin Cooey, and your new skip, Brendan Botcher? It's a good question. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm still learning Brendan Botcher a little bit. We've only played four events, and I played with Kevin for eight years. You know, they got some similarities. Skips are, uh, you know, smart guys. Quiet. They're both pretty... Uh, both pretty quiet fellas, Brendan and Kevin, but, you know, I would say they're both little secret assassins. You know, Kevin had that it factor of being a skip and being a champion, and so does Brendan, which is good. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of similarities. I mean, they're different people, obviously. Brendan's an engineer. Kevin's a landman. You know, Kevin's 47, 48. Brendan's 30. So, you know, experience, obviously. You know, you give the nod to Kevin, but hunger and work ethic and mechanical mind, definitely Brendan is, is a step above. You know, Kevin's a little more old school in his approach. Um, but they're both, you know, superstar skips and, you know, really, really great guys. I didn't really know Brendan too well coming into the season, kind of get to know somebody. Couldn't be a, you know, going into our team, no one really doubted our talent. You know, we had four really good players. You know, is our chemistry, are we going to get along and like the guys? 
I couldn't be more, you know, pleased with the guys we're playing with, you know, having drinking. We don't drink as many beers at night now. We're drinking bubblies. We're the team bubbly, but we, uh, <laughs> we've, been, uh, we've been playing cards on the road, played a ton of golf together this summer. Guys are absolute 10 out of 10. And I always, you know, you never really know somebody until you play with them. You know, I played against Brendan forever, played against Brett forever. But now that we're on the same team, kind of getting to know them, you know, get to know their families, what makes them tick. Just great guys. I'm, ha- I'm having a ball. I feel, I feel, hey, I know I'm 39. I might be looking 39, maybe 35. I'll give myself a bit of credit. But I'm, I'm feeling 25 and rejuvenated with these young guys. It's I awesome. can see it. It's fun to watch. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun to watch. And I love our chats with Ben. Do I have you till for a few segments today? You got me till noon if you oh, want. Perfect. Me. I know you love the sports uh, topics just like I. And he is Bo Levi's best friend. So next segment, we'll talk about the future of the Calgary quarterback, the state of the CFL, plus the Calgary Flames, who I maintain is the number one team in the NHL. And nobody's arguing right now like they were three weeks ago at my contention on that. But Arlen Bruce the third is watching. And you know A.B., oh, two-time yeah. Grey Cup champion. He says, serious question. Which pro sport will have their first female head coach? NBA, CFL, NFL, MLB, NHL, or college football? You know it will happen one day. I, I, I saw this, so I had a second to think about it. I don't want to put you on the spot, but it's the NBA. I think they already have more female assistant coaches already than all those leagues. It's got to be the NBA. I, yeah, plus, yeah. a pretty great league of the WNBA. Is that, could you not see one of their players going and coaching in the NBA? I mean, if I had to guess, I would, you know, no clue. I mean, there's probably a lot of yeah. deserving coaches out there that could get there, but I'd say NBA or, or you know, honestly, maybe NHL. Reason being, I don't see it being football just because the the football leagues, you know, getting to that level are so male dominant. You know, you don't have a pro female football league where the women that play hockey that I went to the Olympics with twice, like Marie Philippe Poulin, Megan Mickelson, Tessa Bonham, like they're superstars and they played at their level. Yeah. Coaching, very, you know, same sport, right? At a high, high level, same as the WNBA, NBA. So I would have to say the NHL or the NBA over football for for the, that reason only, and I'm sure it's not too far down the road. I think it's the NBA, uh, AB, but that's a great question. Yeah, it is a good question. My cousin Christine, I don't like this question, Chris, but I'm going to put it to Ben anyways. He can handle it however he wants. <laughs> she wants to know where you keep your Olympic gold medal. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> my wife would know where it is more than I would know where it is, to be honest with you. My wife has all my memorabilia you know old canada jerseys alberta jerseys sasky jerseys all my medals and stuff she has them hidden for a rainy day for our kids probably okay. but i don't i don't know where it is on the day the reason i don't like the question is i've had friends that have had their gold medals stolen from yeah. international competition so i it's a pretty well-kept secret except for people that might leave a gold medal or a championship ring in the the console of their vehicle and that's not a <laughs> shot at ben i know that's tw- good or that's a good shot one. at both but i know 20 guys that sure. have left their rings sitting in their car. I've left my gold medal in my car before. And you live to tell about it. Wow. Well, just you're at an event and you don't want to take it in. It's heavy and it's in your truck and you, you know. Really Yours is you very heavy. You don't really think about it in those situations, but <laughs> no, it's probably don't. a dumb move. How, what's that thing weigh? Five pounds? Yeah, I don't even know. Maybe a couple. Two, three couple pounds. pounds yeah, probably. That's enough. A gold medal. Can you believe that? It's enough. An Olympic gold medal. More with Ben Hebert when we come back, and we will get into uh, football talk, some hockey talk, and, of course, more curling and your questions and comments. We're live on Game Plus TV from Gray Eagle Resort and Casino, your favorite podcast platform, YouTube Live, and on the radio, WQEE 99.1 FM. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to YouTube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 
people donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Dark Horse Bets today. I gotta hit the beat. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. All right, we're back. We're live at Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. I got caught into chatting with Benny here. <clears throat> Lost track of time. And I was looking at the YouTube feed. Four-time Briar champion, Olympic gold medalist, Ben Hebert with us from Team Botcher. Who is the villain, by the way, of the curling tour, Brendan Botcher? You guys probably... He is! Buddy, he took such a... He is the least bit of a villain out of any curler I've ever... You know what he is? Everybody hates him. He might be the nicest guy I've ever curled with. Truly. Like, how did the persona come about then that people he, don't he, like it? He, he cut a guy after they won the briar. Molding. Molding. He cut him. They weren't getting along. Do you know how many yeah. times that happens in curling where teams aren't getting along and they decide to make a change? All it was obviously so deep that him and Darren weren't seeing eye to eye that they decided to make a move prior to the, to the briar, which they got to go to Canada. So that was an unfortunate situation, obviously, for Darren because he wanted to play in the briar. But as far as this, like, villain and bad guy and not a good person, like, Brennan Botcher is such a stand-up guy and such a nice guy and a great teammate. <laughs> that stuff is... Because even when it was going on, we didn't know. Well, I wasn't on their team. I wasn't texting Darren and Brendan about what was going There's on. There's a lot of curling drama, though, yeah, man. Yeah, so we were, we were kind of intrigued, like, what the heck is going on? And now that I've played with him, oh, man. Hey, he, he ain't that guy. I got it for our... Southern listeners, because WQEE is your southern home of sports and talk. Curling's like the NASCAR of Canada. The drama away from the field yeah. is as big as sometimes what's going on on the field. Yeah. And we get into that. Which, speaking of that, everybody is waiting. We all know that you're very close friends with Bo Levi Mitchell, the quarterback of the Calgary Stampeders. And I wonder what your take is. Are you 50-50 Ryder Stamps fan now? Or more Riders? Where are you? From Sask, but live here? I mean, if the Riders aren't playing the Stamps, I'll cheer for the Riders. I mean, I'm, I'm a CFL fan. I do kind of try to watch as much as I can still. Yeah. I'm a big NFL guy, so when NFL starts, if I don't love what I'm seeing in the CFL, I, I trend more NFL, but I really liked watching that BC quarterback, that Rourke, this yeah. year. He was, he was great to watch. You know, this little dynasty they got going on in Winnipeg is intriguing because... There's some you know, good storylines. Being a Ryder fan, playing the Bombers all the time, growing up on uh, Labor Day, and, you know, you know, like Caleros having the concussions, and everyone thought he was done to being one of the best players in the league. You know, it's, it's good. But And obviously with Bo being my, you know, business partner in our pod and being good friends and golf buddies, I, I cheer for him as an individual and met some of his teammates. And I've been, I've been in Calgary now for 11 years, so if the Snaps do good, it's great for the city. When the Flames do good, it's great for the city. So... I would say the last couple of years getting to know Bo, I've cheered hard for him in the Stamps. This weekend, if you know, Bo's not playing, it's a nothing game. I have 12 tickets I'm giving away. I'm, I won't even be going to the game. But uh, Who's your NFL team? Just by Oh, it's depressing. I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. But I love Kenny Overall, Pickett. Overall, it's been fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love Kenny Pickett. Uh, they're in for a bad year this year, but I do like the Steelers. But, I mean, I'm a... I'm an animal when it comes to fantasy football and a little bit of gambling on the okay. weekends with NFL with my fam. So was, I do love it. It was killing me not to be at Hard Rock Stadium Sunday night for Sunday night football. Didn't yeah. look beautiful there. Great game. 
Wonderful ending. Way to go, Dolphins. Hashtag fins up. So. Fins up. Let's just walk it back a little bit and your yeah. take on Bo Levi Mitchell losing his starting job as quarterback of the Calgary Stampede. I didn't see that coming. Yeah. No, I mean, I didn't either. I mean, obviously, I don't have as much insight as you may think. He keeps that stuff pretty close to his chest. And, you know, when he's down in the dumps, I don't really like poking him and about stuff like that. But when things were going good, I knew, I knew going into this season, he was fired up. I know he really wanted to play well. He was healthy. Shoulder was feeling better. And he got off to a great start. He played really good his first couple games. And then I think he would tell you, you know, his last two games prior to being pulled, he didn't play very good. But the Stamps were 6-3. and three. And they were, you know, they were third in the West because of BC playing so well and Winnipeg being in the West now. And he lost to, I think, BC once in a great game, 41-40. Put up 40 points and lost. Okay? Read between the lines there if you'd like. And then he lost two great games against Winnipeg, actually. One in Winnipeg, too. It was a barn burner. And so I think he thought, you know, heading into the next part of the schedule there, got a couple softballs with Edmonton, you get Ottawa, you know, Montreal, Hamilton, teams that they're going to beat, even the Riders, like they're, you know, they're pretty trash this year. And when Bo got pulled at 6-3, and three, I think he was probably looking down there, okay, we can, that's a winnable game, that's a winnable game, and getting excited for the playoffs. And then Rourke got hurt. So now the Stamps are sitting there with all the cards, thinking they're going to get a home West final, and they pulled him. So I think he was a little bit disappointed in that. I mean, I was disappointed in that, you know, as a friend and, and even watching the Stamps. I thought that Bo could have lit those teams up pretty good. But they put Jake in. I mean, and, and no, no discredit to Jake. I think Jake is the future of the Calgary. I mean, hey, they made it pretty clear he's the future. Um, I mean, Bo got yanked there that one game. I think he threw a pick in the first half or maybe two picks. I mean, Jake's had two picks in three of his last five starts. I think he had three picks the one game. And, you know, his leash is a lot longer than, than, uh, than Bo's. Bo's was. So I think that, uh, I think, hey, it's pretty much guaranteed he's healthy. I know he's 32. I have talked to him. He definitely wants to play. I think if you look around at the state of the CFL, which I know you do, you're, you're avid in the CFL, it's probably only three teams where he's not the starter. You know, Winnipeg, BC, and then obviously Calgary. But uh, I think it's going to be an interesting offseason for him. I think he's going to have a lot of offers. And if he's healthy and his mind's in it and he really wants to keep going, which, which I know he does, uh, there's going to be some there's going to be some takers for him that's for sure and I think he's going to have he's going to find some success well right there you've given us more info than we had before because a lot of people thought he might retire and you're saying that's no, not no dice most guys don't when they can still play yeah. right and then yeah. you don't want it to end the way this could have ended or it looks no. right for him so. I mean even for me I I'm, I mean I've never talked about retirement with Bo with his football I just know you know, I know, I know as much about his football from him as from golfing with him. We, we talk about football for 10 minutes, and then we, you know, we grab a vodka and hit drivers and pitching wedges. So, you know, I just know he, he doesn't want no, he's, he doesn't want to go out like that. I wouldn't want to go out like that. He wants to go out on his own terms. He's a Hall of Famer. He's probably the, one of the best quarterbacks of all time in the CFL. And I think he still has a lot left in the tank, and he has some stuff to prove. I think he's, I think he's going to go somewhere and do well. Maybe a fresh start maybe is what he needs. Uh, somewhere where he's the clear-cut starter. I think Jake played a few games last year and looked really good, which maybe soured the water for Bo coming into the season. And I've been following the, the Stamps beat writer there. Um, Danny Austin. Danny Austin. And, you know, throughout the training camp, he must have tweeted 10 times that Bo Levi looks like the clear-cut starter. It's not close. It's not a competition. It was a competition. It's not a competition anymore. So if they were going into the season with, um, you know, playing for that starting job, you know, Bo won it. You know, it wasn't given to him based on previous. So I think after Bo won it, he, you know, he, he felt good about that and he had a good camp. And then obviously the way it went. But, he's, you know, I will say this. He's taken the high road. <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> oh, I he, could not he is, do it. He has taken the high road big time, you know, because I know deep down as an athlete and, you know, how, how he must feel about the whole thing. Ooh. But, you know, he, he's been a great teammate. It looks like he's been doing everything to help Jake, help the team win. He's there if Jake gets hurt, but I think he knows his role right now as backup. But uh, I think at the end of the season, I mean, he knows. I mean, everybody knows he's not going to be here next year. Is that still a secret? Because that can't be a secret. They already signed Jake, right? Yeah. So, so he's going to be going somewhere. And if you think that he won't be circling the calendar on the day he comes back here when Calgary comes into town, uh, I think you'd be highly mistaken. I'm sure a lot of our viewers and listeners are going, you sure talk a lot about this Bo Levi guy. And we do. He's from Katy, Texas, played at Eastern Washington, two-time Grey Cup champion, two-time 
most outstanding player in the Canadian Football League, three-time All-Star, FCS champion, Walter Payton Award winner, Big Sky Conference Offensive Player of the Year. He is a walking Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. And what you're telling me right now is that he's not done, but for him to go somewhere, he has to go somewhere. So would it be Saskatchewan? Because you're hearing that. Yeah, I don't know. I've heard all the rumors that everyone else has heard. I mean, I think Saski could potentially be a spot for him due to what happened there this year. That was a nightmare Disaster. for them. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the league, I mean, Edmonton needs a guy, although they signed that Cornelius I saw. Yeah, he's long-term, yep. Yeah. You know, I don't know what's happening. Where's the Grey Cup next year? Hamilton? Uh, yes. Okay, they don't have a guy. Toronto maybe has a guy. Old Bethel Thompson. He's Macbeth. Yeah, yeah Macbeth. You know, he, he's... Uh, he can get it around, but who's Ottawa's guy? Trevor Harris? No, he's in Montreal. Montreal. It's uh, Jeremiah Masoli, who's hurt. Well, yeah, currently. he was hurt. I mean, I just, I just see that there being, you know, there's probably going to be three to four really interested teams. <laughs> uh, and one of them we know is Sass. Rose is watching in Edmonton. Rose, one of our priority one viewers, I love her. She says, I can't see Bo in Saskatchewan. He hates them and they hate him. Uh-huh. There's something just wrong with that rumor. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I come from Saskatchewan, and I think that, how would you like to have uh, Matt Tuchuk or Brad Marchant on your team that everybody hates when, when they're against you because they're, they're feisty and they're gritty and they're, and they're playmakers and they're winners? That's what Bo Levi is. You know, and I think that, um, you know, coming from Regina and knowing the crowd there, Bo, Bo has a little swagger on him. You know, he's got a little ego on him, like a little pep in his step. And I think that Regina... If you're the starting quarterback of the Riders, you know, you get that attention and they, they love when you're the man and you're winning. And so I think you saw some indecisiveness maybe in their quarterback this year with being booed and stuff like that. Like, Bo doesn't care about that. <laughs> He'd, He'd come out he, would say, out. he would say, we should have got booed. We were trash, you know? He wouldn't say it hurt us. No. Voice. Oh, God, never, 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 never. But when you win... And he throws a ball into the crowd, and he's loving it, and then the stadium gets busy again. And Regina's the best place to play when the Riders are winning and things are going good. No, no questions asked. But they got to win, and right now they're not a winning team, so you're seeing some negative downfalls there. But I don't know if Bo's going to go there. I mean, I think, I, I think this. It's pretty crystal clear that Fajardo's done there, yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm surprised he might, even, might not even come to Calgary this weekend. Like I don't, here's, here would be my, my – and I have zero – I have never asked Bo about this. If it was me, and it's towards the end of my career, and maybe I had two, three more years left, do I want to go to Toronto or Hamilton and be buried by the Raptors, the Blue Jays, the Leafs, soccer team there? Like, Toronto's just, the CFL there is so small. When you go to Regina and you wheel in, and Delari or Kappa, whoever, they got cars waiting for you. You're the man. You probably got to deal with Kip, 22 fresh. You got all this stuff going. You're the man of Regina. And I think that to go out like the way he wants to go out, being a Hall of Famer, I think it might be a good fit for him. Now, saying that, they're going to have to put a team around him because right now, you know, the team's probably not up to snuff. Missing the playoffs when you're hosting the Great Cup isn't a a great look for those guys. But uh, I I would say this. I have no clue. But but some people say, like, there's no way. I I definitely see that there's a way. Uh, We'll get to your questions when we come back. Mandy in Edmonton says, it's so awesome that Ben partners with Bo on the pod and comes on the show. Benny's good that way. I'm not sure if we'll ever get Bo. For me, that ship has (laughs) sailed. Uh, Mandy says, Jake Mayer and Nathan Rourke are the stars and faces of the 2023 CFL season. Colin in Ottawa says, would Bo go to Toronto? Didn't what he wanted him when he was a free agent last time. And... Corey May in Winnipeg says Bo would put Hamilton in the Grey Cup. And Mandy also wants to know, you mentioned barn burner. She wants to know your definition of what that term means. So we'll talk about that and why not a little Flames and NHL hockey when we come back to Great Eagle Resort and Casino right after this with the great Ben Hebert on Game Plus TV, YouTube Live, and WQEE 99.1 FM. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now.
easy snacking all around. Something everyone can love. bets today. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on on you know the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital Ford Lincoln. We have a great selection of brand new F-150s in stock. Drive it off the lot today. Reserve an incoming unit or pre-order the perfect vehicle for you. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital Ford Lincoln, making back to busy easy. Easy snacking all around. Something everyone can love. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Check out Gray Eagle Resort and Casino.ca for the exciting lineup at the event center there this fall and winter. Darcy Oak this Saturday night, illusionist. He's amazing. He's like the next David Copperfield. I've seen him live. Scott Oak's son here at Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. Check it out. See if there are tickets available. Just before more with Ben Hebert, a sports update here on Hour 2. The Toronto Raptors will shoot for their second straight win as they host the Philadelphia 76ers tonight. It's the first time the teams have met since the Sixers eliminated the Raptors in the first round of last season's NBA playoffs. Atlanta Hawks at the Detroit Pistons tonight, by the way. Third place in the Southeastern Conference. Hashtag true to Atlanta. Edmonton. Edmonton is the lone Canadian NHL team in action tonight. The Oilers can rise above 500 with a road victory at St. Louis, but the Blues blanked the Oil 2-0 on Saturday. Elsewhere, the Rangers host the Islanders, and the Tampa Bay Lightning visit the Anaheim Ducks. Let me just mention the dub tonight. The Moose Jaw Warriors are at Regina to take on Connor Bedard and the Pats. Victoria visits the Red Deer Rebels, and the Lethbridge Hurricanes are on the road to Swift Current. This sports update for Ballers Rec Room, the home of the RP Show Canadian Football Championship Party, Friday night, November 18th, at Ballers Rec Room. For the Tab Brew House and Drive Through Liquor Store, and for Red Bull Canada, Red Bull gives you wings. Ben Hebert is with us, four time Briar Champion, Olympic gold medal. She talked about you guys had your light, lights punched out this weekend in this yeah. slam. Yeah, we got worked 0 4. Wow. But some close games. I mean, teams are tough. Just didn't, uh, yeah, 
Nice looking barn up there in uh, Fort, uh, GP. GP. Yeah, yeah. We didn't even get to play in the nice barn. We played in the other barn. We played in the Coca Cola Center, not that like that bonnets. Oh, okay. And we played our provincials there last year. But yeah, I mean GP's great, great curling town. I actually like going up there to visit. I got some friends up there. My company does some work up there, so got to see a bunch of sponsors. Got out of there nice and quick though. But uh, then we got back to work this week. Get back on the horse. Uh, Terry writes in, says, welcome back to Calgary RP. Was just watching live from the Great Eagle for a while. Great venue. That must have been. No, that's not. You're not Terry. <laughs> I thought it was you. Um, so Mandy goes, what's your definition of a barn burner? Barn burner, great game. Burns a barn down. Yeah, tight, tight game. Fans are into it. Back and forth battle. Never know who's going to win to the last minute. That was kind of what I thought that BC Calgary game was here. And uh, I think it was in July. They always have the great. They had both games here against BC have been great. Yeah, they were. Very good games. Um, yeah. And for those that don't know, hockey was played. 50 years ago in arenas, and some still are, that looked like barns. You know, that's where the word barn came from. That's the truth. And uh, the great games was like, we burned the barn down. So you know how many, you know many curling rinks I grew up curling in in Saski that were the old, the old barn shape, the red barn? Like imagine. the tin one in, in Chrono. Cold at all? Oh, man. Yeah, we didn't care. We were kids. But, yeah, that's what we grew up playing. In, you don't notice it rinks. when you're kids. No, you don't. Uh, the Flames, would you agree with me, are the number one team in the National Hockey League? I was at the game last night. Yeah? Yeah, our good friends at um, ATB. I went and hosted a suite with uh, a bunch of first responders, cops, firefighters, EMTs. It was great. And uh, Lanny was up there. Of course he was. Had a little, had a little beer with Lanny, his beauty. But, no, hey, the Flames look good. And Don't I, they? Oh, man. Hey, Kadri is an animal. Two goals last oh, night. Oh, is he good? I know they, they, you know, they really hyped Uyghur and Huberto coming, which and they, they're both huge assets. And Huberto is on the power play. He looks like you can't take the puck away from him. He's so big. He's such a good passer. He just sticks his butt out, can't get to the puck, controls the play. He's strong. He's, He's an ox. Such a stud. But, uh, man, Kadri looks good. He's not Lo- very big, hey? That's Who's that? Kadri. Why? I feel that he's not, not Huberto hey, big. He plays big. Oh, I, I don't know I, how big he is, but he plays big. Trust me, I get it. Stanley Cup champion, he's getting paid big. He he no. is worth every penny so far. But I went down to watch Warmies a couple of games ago, and I was trying to take pictures of him to send to my brother, who I was just with on Sunday at his farm. I'm like, this guy isn't. He does play big. I'm just saying he wouldn't be much more than 200 pounds. I bet I could look yeah. it up right now. Yeah, but I mean, man, he hits, he grinds. You know, he he's a. He's similar to like a Marshawn and scrappy guy like oh, yeah. that to Chuck that's in your face. He's mucking. He can score. I, I like Kadri from what I mean. I liked Kadri when he was on the Leafs. And then he obviously had great success in uh, Colorado. Colorado. But, yeah, he looked awesome last night. Hey, the Flames are deep. Their goalie's a stud. They got deep D. I mean, I only get to say you don't get to see everybody across the league because you only see the Western Canadian teams up here for the most part. But Calgary looks very, very good. I got him number one in the NHL. And I saw a guy – put on Twitter yesterday, who is your favorite flame? And I had to think about it for a while. It might be Kadri, but I really like Blake Coleman. And I'm a goalie guy, but Jacob Markstrom's got to pick it up. Played great last night. One goal against, against Sid the Kid. 34, yeah. 33 saves. How was the barn, by the way? I said I drove back from Saski because I was storm stayed for two days. It looked great on television. When Sid the Kid's there, there's, there's a vibe. hey, right? hey. I, I have season tickets to the Flames. You know, my company, I host, I do some sales, take out some clients. But uh, there was a strategic play for me to go last night. I can go watch Huberto and Kadri whenever. I wanted to see Sid. I wanted to see Malkin. Did, he live, did they live up to it? Or yeah, they- I mean, Malkin had a nice goal, power play goal. Sid looked good. It just, honestly, Calgary kind of bullied them. They were coming off back-to-backs against uh, Edmonton there. Calgary just looked great. But, yeah, I mean, anytime Sid touches the puck, it, he ain't getting booed here. Everybody loves him. Everybody's there to see him. There was a buzz in the arena. I think, hey, if Sid would have got a couple goals and the Flames would have won 5-2, everyone would have been happy with that too. But, uh, you know, it's always great to see one of the best players of all time coming into Calgary. And as a Flames fan, and you, like I say, you want the Stamps to do good, you want the Flames to do good here. City gets buzzing. It's more fun for everything. The city's going to be buzzing come, come uh, April, May, come playoff time because the Flames are dynamite. Great time for our show to be here, there's no doubt. In history, Flames are good. Stamps are always good, but... Um, Mandy, I'll get to your question in a second. Just a few of the comments. Ryan in New York says, Colsey, former Albany devil. Sorry, Albany, as my U.S. friends have corrected me. <laughs> he says, great guy on and off the ice. Um, Allie is watching in Texas. She says, Blake Coleman is super talented. I may be biased. 
Aaron in Edmonton says, I wonder when Crosby will no longer be the kid. I'm imagining a 60-year-old retired guy called Sid the Kid. Tim Hunter, I don't know if you follow Tim on social media or not, but he put photos of warm-up with all the kids around the glass that were down there to catch a look at Sid. You know what I mean? Sid has that aura. He's earned that aura. He's he's, the Gretzky of our time. Exactly. He'd be, I would rather go right now. I mean, hey, if you watch the games, I watch a lot of hockey as well. McDavid certainly is a little more electric than Crosby is these days. If I had to pick to go watch a game, it would be Pittsburgh and Calgary or Edmonton, Calgary. It's not even close for me. You want to see Pittsburgh? Every single day of the week. Like, I, you know, Sid has however many years left of being a, you know, super. Hey, he's still, by the way, he's still unbelievable. If they do in a Canadian Olympic team today, Sid's your captain. Bar none. Like, he, was, he looked good out there last night, too. What, and, and, and coming into this game, he was, like, tied for fifth in the NHL in scoring. Ridiculous. Like, I mean, he's he is ridiculous. Three points each the first three games, Right? I think. He's gross. So, <laughs> it's not like Sid's done. It's just you can see the new guys rolling in. But, uh, yeah, I, I love watching well, Sid. And the other thing was last night, on, I know you love leadership. And on the, uh, who doesn't, right? And on the yeah. broadcast, they mentioned that he's the captain. And I was like, for that long, he was the captain at 18. But it's not like they're going to take the C away from him. He'll be the C till Til he's done. Till he's done. Yeah, yeah. Which is pretty cool, too. Yeah. Um, Jeff Cabellos of Winnipeg wants to know who your NFL team is, and we covered that. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Not good. Mandy says, you know, not good now. Uh, Mandy says, Rod and Ben, what are your thoughts on my idea that Bo Levi stays with the Stampeders next season as behind-the-scenes quarterbacks coach working with Dave Dickinson? What would be... Something less than zero percent. Is there is there such thing as that? <laughs> no, I mean Bo, Bo's Bo's guys. Bo's still playing. He's, everyone think you know. I get this sometimes too. I can slightly relate in a much smaller scale because curling. Like when I was winning, I, I mean I won the Olympics when I was twenty six. I won the Briar when I was twenty four, twenty five. When you win young, the longer you go, and people are like, oh, you're old, you're washed. Well, you didn't win till you were thirty one. So you think I'm six, seven years older than I am. I'm only 39. Kerry Price is 33. When I, he's 50. When I started curling yeah. with Kevin Martin, so I curled with Kevin Martin for eight years. His, his best four years were 39 to 43 with us. And you're just hitting it. I haven't even, I'm just, I just got to 39. Like, give me a year to breathe it in, you know what I mean? So thing is with Bo, he's 32. I think Tom Brady put a little bit of, like, fake, fake age into quarterbacks. Like, everyone can play till they're 44 or 45. You know, that, that might not be realistic. But look at look at Caleros. How how old is Zach Caleros? Uh, Zach's 33, 34. 30, okay, maybe thirty four. Okay, so he's two years older than Bo. He don't look like he's slowing down, right? Realistically, could I see Bo playing at least thirty five at at a good competitive level, get on a good team, and make a championship team? Hundred percent. Hey, do I think Bo could go to coaching? Maybe. Well, for sure, if he wanted to. They're saying broadcasting. Well, it's, hey, it's easy and everybody can do it. Well, I don't know about that, but from from working with Bo on the pod. He certainly has a knack for it. He watches a lot of sports. He's got that southern twang accent that, you know, brings a little bit of stuff up to Canada, which we don't have. But he did TSN last year, Great Cup, with Dunnigan and the crew, didn't he? Yes, he, and I heard it was great. He, he did a great job. Well, you're an athlete and you're in the game, and you can relate to the players. And I played against that guy. Well, here's what this guy does. Of course that's going to be valuable. Not but, you many know, people can say that. Exactly. So, so he'd be a stud there, but I think there's a time and a place for that for him, and I think he's got a plan. And he, he is not done, and he is not coaching uh, with Dave Dickinson next year in Calgary. No. Jeff in Winnipeg says, yep, Zach's 34. There Thank you, go. you. I know Zach quite well. Uh, oddly enough, never met Bo. Mandy says, I don't, ag- I don't agree with Ben at all. Okay, man. Great, but this is Bo's best friend. Well, if I, you don't believe ba- him. B- best friend is a stretch. We, you know, we are great friends. Neighbor? And we, yeah, yeah, he lives down the street, and you we play a lot together, of golf you together. You host a podcast together. But yeah. You, Oh, he's, my, he's a good buddy of mine. Okay. Well, so what does she disagree about? What does she think? She thinks he's going to stay with the Stamps. <laughs> and uh, Right. And by the way, what we will get into when we come back is whatever you want to in viewer takeover. But let's look at the way Bo's handled it and Cody Fajardo's handled the same situation. And that's being demoted as a starting quarterback. So that and more when we return, when we look at tonight's NHL games. It's the RP Show live from Gray Eagle on Game Plus TV. YouTube Live and WQEE 99.1 FM. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to YouTube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now.
Download Dark Horse Bets today. Beat. I gotta hit the beat. Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital GMC. Reserve your brand new truck or SUV today. Check out our great selection of in-stock GM certified pre-owned trucks and make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital GMC, making back to busy easy. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us, and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have, utilizing a fully integrated 360-degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Lovely look out of doors here at the Gray Eagle Resort and Casino, Calgary's entertainment destination. They like the Flames. They love the Stampeders. That's my slogan, but that's what I've seen with my own eyes. Uh, Benny Hebert is here. Curling God. And there's a lot of comments have come in. Arlen Bruce III says, Bo is going to Toronto. Jeff in Winnipeg says, always a hoot, having been on the RP show. He's an RP show first ballot Hall of Famer. There's no doubt. First guy to drop the F bomb on this show was Ben. You don't even swear on your own show. Oh uh, yeah, we did. We did. F words. All the words. Bull wouldn't. He always he always gave me the gears, but I would just let, I'd let it, I'd let it fly. Okay, okay. Um, Corey in Winnipeg says, "I love Ben's knowledge of sports across the board." He's all right. <laughs> the rumor, and this bothers me a little bit. And I was telling Fairholm this. As a matter of fact. Tell the folks your Fairholme story. I guess he, he's not just my favorite writer. No, I, I, I'd never met Jeff Fairholme until I came in here today, but growing stud. up in Regina, stud. stud. But I remember when he played with Austin and Tom Burgess, like back when the riders, when we had our university section ticket, section 27, you know, the poor people section where me and my university buddies went to, we had no money. We, <laughs> uh, I went to Jersey City, but we bought two jerseys, me and my buddy, Quentin Stewart, works at Viterra now. We, we couldn't get the ones with the, the name plates on because it was too, too expensive. It was another 100 bucks. Hey, so we took them to my, my boys at Queen City Sports in Regina, Tony and Greg. They did them up for us for dirt cheap because I had done some curling stuff with them in the past. And we did Elgard and Fairholme, 1881. And to this day, I still have my Fairholme jersey. It's actually at my dad's in Regina. I think my dad wears it to the game still. But uh, So, yeah, I've had, two, I've had two rider jerseys my whole life. Lucius Floyd, 31, backflip city. And um, Jeff, Fairholme. Jeff Fairholme. So, yeah, and I got to meet Jeff today. That was pretty cool. And I got a Fairholme jersey, too. So yeah. how about that? I got to give a shout out to our guy, Ryan O'Radio, running the controls at WQEE in Atlanta. He says, another great show. Thank you, Ryan. And I'm glad that you and the listeners enjoy this stuff that we're talking about, because sometimes I feel like they think we're on another planet. What's this CFL stuff? For instance, 
You love those sports banquets, eh? They're so much fun. They're fun. Yeah, they're so, yeah. we've done the one together, the university one. Remember? Yeah, that was a it good was one. Great. You are, the breakfast. Yeah, so I was with Stu Grimson Saturday night in Lampman. We're taking questions from the crowd, written down on ballots, and somebody says, who will be the coach and GM of the Rough Riders next year? I'm like, Stu, do you want to handle that one? He's in Nashville. He's a hockey guy. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't He's know. Like, what? They don't even know who these people are. But because of our show, grow the profile. So to that, and here's Allie in Texas. She says the same thing. Great show, guys. Have everybody. Thank you, Allie. Um, the rumors. Okay, here's a rumor. I don't believe it, but it's the rumor. The current special teams coordinator of the Calgary Stampeders, Mark Killam, will be the head coach in Saskatchewan next year. The offensive coordinator will be Mark Mueller, who's currently the QB coach in Calgary. Richie Hall will be the defensive coordinator, which completely you're drunk off your ass if you think this is going to happen, but that's the rumor. And you say if these things happen, then there's no way that Bo won't be the quarterback there. Where's Richie Hall right now? Winnipeg winning Grey Cups I, as the defensive so coordinator. I, I am not even close to a privy as those rumors as you. I, I'd like to comment a it's, little I don't want to be privy to No, it. I know. I'm just saying I, I haven't heard any of that. But, I mean, if I, you know, you said where do I think Bo's going to go, I, I don't know. I truly don't know. I mean, he's. I think he's going to have offers. However, if his current Special teams coach in Regina, Mueller, who I know very well. I love Mark. If Mark's there, I mean, that probably plays a little bit more favorable for, for him going there. Um, but these are all hypotheticals that don't mean jack squat until something happens. I mean, who knows what the riders are going to do? I actually really like Coach Dickey. I got to know Coach course, there over the last salt few years. Of the earth. Great, great guy. And, you know, he's, is he going to be the... This, the guy that has to fall on the sword for the team here for missing the playoffs. I mean, I think that probably the Riders are going to have to make some changes. If not, I saw that beautiful NFL stadium in the heart of downtown. Very it's empty. Amazing. Yeah. Very, very empty. But that place is, is uh, 12 out of 10. I still, when I fly into Regina and I see it, or you see it from golfing at the Royal Regina in the distance, you know, growing up, I'm like, I can't believe that's here. You know, it's, it's unreal. It's unreal. But it's an NFL stadium. It is an NFL yeah. stadium, but when it's empty, you know, that's not a good look, especially coming from Regina. They're, they, they're very proud Ryder fans, and they're, you know, they like to talk about being the best fans in, the, in the, the country. But when you don't fill it, I think changes are probably coming. You know, whether that be their president or, you know, if it's Jeremy, and I love Jeremy too. I got a great relationship with him. Or if Dickie has to take the fall, but I have no clue what they're going to do. I mean, how would I, I'm just curling. So it would I'm just, be I'm just, hard to say that Bo will be the quarterback. Until you, you see who, yeah. yeah, I think, I mean, Bo, hey, he, if he's going to have some options, he's going to want to go talk to the GM. He's going to want to know who the coach is. He wants to know what kind of team they're going to build around him. You know, he's going to he's gonna be like Tom when he left uh, New England going to uh, Tampa. Tampa. You know, he's going to want some players. And how did it work out for Tom? Not bad. Work out for Tom? Everything works out for Tom. Doesn't it? Well, he's yeah. the best. Maybe the last little while, maybe not. When's but the next uh, time you're coming to Florida, by the way? And I'll tour you around. How much know. they love Tom down there. Oh. Even South Florida. I love him too. Where he's built a home. He's great. Uh, Kirk watching in Saskatoon, Sass, says there has been so much talk on the riders and what's went wrong. Who do you see as players and coaches as locks to come back to Sask? We've kind of just covered that. Rick Sawatsky's watching in Martinsville, and he says, you think Bo would sign with the riders with our current O-line and without stable management? Ben's just addressed that. He will probably have his pick of teams to play. We've got a minute and a half left here. Your thoughts on Cody Fajardo and the way it's ended for him? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I don't know Cody. I think he had a couple great years there. Last year, obviously, beating Calgary in the West Semi and going to the West Final up against the Winnipeg Juggernaut. Probably a good run for him. I think Cody's a, I mean, he's a competitor. Runs hard. You know, he's a great runner. Obviously, I think the knock on him would be finding the open guy and getting rid of the rock fast enough. But, you know, like you say, it's a, I think the starting quarterbacks of the league today are the starters for a reason. And I think that there's a few uh, empty spots on certain teams that might want Cody. I mean, he certainly it looks like he's done in Regina. Obviously, they wouldn't have made that move. But, um, you know, seems like a nice, nice enough guy. I think he could have handled things a lot differently and played play in the poor me card when you get booed. You know, that, that's certainly not my mentality as an athlete. I would have, you know, sucked it up and flipped him the bird and came. Not actually done that, but, you know, try to play great and, and get him to shut up by winning. Shove it down their throat. Right, right. But didn't we are we are out of time. Uh, Mandy says thanks for the show today, Rod. Enjoyed my time with you and your guests. Jennifer says excited for the Pats and more tonight. We haven't even talked about God's team and Connor Bedard. Maybe uh, maybe tomorrow. Um, yeah, Atlanta Hawks at Detroit tonight. The Raptors home to the Phillies. Three NHL games is going to be another great 
night of sports. Thanks for coming down, Ben. Here, Roddy. Guess we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm as intrigued as you. Fun. See you tomorrow, noon Eastern, here on Game Plus and WQ. Who has more fun than us? <laughs> Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now.